Hi, my name is Trent Brereton. I'm a naturopathic doctor uh, practicing in Cranbrook, British Columbia, and I'm here with Rico, who has generously come in to offer his knee to be uh, both scanned with a Clarius ultrasound and injected with duralane hyaluronic acid. So for Rico's exam, we'll start him supine on the table with his knee bolstered. That allows for better assessment of the knee, particularly in terms of the suprapatellar pocket injection, but also comfortable for the patient in terms of releasing his low back. So in terms of uh, this scan, we're just going to use stanhexidine as the transducer medium, simply because we are going to do an injection following this, and then we'll also clean with chlorhexidine. So I'll liberally apply the stanhexidine to the knee and place the probe long on his left knee. On the left side of the screen, we can see the proximal patella with a quadriceps tendon attached. Superficial, of course, is subcutaneous tissue, and deep, the white line, is the femur. Just superficial to the femur is the prefemoral fat pad sitting there between the femur and the quadriceps tendon, and proximal to the patella is a suprapatellar fat pad. The suprapatellar pocket is an extension of the capsule that comes from the joint and extends up and rising more superiorly to land between the prefemoral fat pad and the quadriceps tendon. So as part of the exam, the first thing that we're doing anytime we're looking at doing a knee injection is we're scanning for how much fluid is in the knee joint. And in Rico's case, the knee does not have much fluid. If there was a large fluid pocket, we would see a large black space, hypoechoic space, uh, just deep to the quadriceps tendon. And in some cases, that pocket will be very large and filled with up to 100, 180 cc's of fluid. Typically for an injection, it's not worthwhile removing any fluid unless there's more than 10 to 12 cc's. The reason for that is in order to aspirate a knee, you have to use a large bore needle, typically an 18 gauge needle. And there's inevitably some tissue injury when you do that aspiration and that causes bleeding. And so one has to make a calculation between aspirating fluid so that you reduce the fluid volume into which you're putting medicine. Of course, it makes no sense to put a three cc injection into hundred cc's of fluid. Uh, that medicine is just going to be so diluted, it'll have limited effect. But if there's too little fluid and you aspirate, then you'll cause bleeding and just local tissue irritation and end up with more fluid in the form of blood inside the joint capsule. So that uh, often negates the value of an aspiration of a low volume of fluid on the knee. So in Rico's case, there's not a lot of fluid. It's also important to note that the capsule extends proximal to the patella and the lateral gutter, in other words, the lateral aspect of that pocket is typically quite a bit larger. If there's a large knee effusion, that fluid will fill the lateral gutter and you can access it with a very short needle from the lateral side of the leg. So the second thing that we look at is the quality and the integrity of the quadriceps tendon. And what you're looking for are long linear, uninterrupted fibers. And one can tell very little from one plane. In this plane, it looks like a very healthy quadriceps tendon. Anytime you're assessing pathology, particularly in tendons or ligaments, you must assess that in two dimensions. So I'll go from long axis and hold in the same position into short axis and slide caudal cephalad to look for what we call fibular disruption, which in the meat of the tendon would be black spots. It looks speckled or mottled, and that would suggest that there, there's some fiber disruption. And I'm not seeing any of that on your knee, Rico. Good sign. Second thing we can do is slide distal to the patella and examine the patellar tendon. And in this case, the fibers are long and linear with very little disruption. Again, first in long axis, secondly in short axis. And very healthy tissue. So this is all very superficial in the quadriceps tendon. From the kneecap, slide medial off the knee 
and down onto the medial surface of the knee and then slide distal to assess the integrity of the medial collateral ligament and to get a broad sense of the health of the medial meniscus. The other thing we're looking for here, in addition to the health of the meniscus, sometimes you can see if there's a tear in the meniscus, you can see it if it's very superficial. Uh, but more often than not, ultrasound examination of the meniscus is not of great value. One can easily see whether or not there's any spurring, which is uh, the formation of bumps right on the medial edge of the joint line. And there is a little bit of spurring happening here, which is not surprising given that Rico does have some knee pain associated with what I assume is some earlier moderate arthritis. Do we know that in your case? We don't, just, just knee pain? Yeah. Uh-huh, okay. Okay, so as we're, as we're scanning on the medial knee, first thing we look at is the meniscus. The second thing we can examine is the medial collateral ligament. And one thing I will say is for people first starting in ultrasound scanning, the joint line is surprisingly distal. So let's start again on the patella, slide off and down. One might think we'd be on the knee joint there, but you actually have to slide quite a bit distal to find the knee joint. So now I'm centered over the knee joint. And I know learners that I work with, I myself when I first started using ultrasound was surprised at how distal it is. So after you've examined the medial meniscus, and the, uh, the medial surface of the femur and the tibia, you can then look at the medial collateral ligament, which is just superficial to the medial meniscus. In fact, the deep layers of the medial collateral ligament are attached to the medial meniscus. And in Rico's case, the MCL, or medial collateral ligament, again, looks very continuous. Notice how far proximal it attaches way up here and it travels way down onto the pes anserine. It's a very long ligament. And as we slide distal, and as you see that very moderate sulcus there in the bone, that is the pes attachments or the pes anserine. Rico, just roll a bit onto your right hip, just, just ever so slightly. Yeah, there we go. Let's start square on the patella again and slide off lateral. And in this case, our target is actually the proximal head of the fibula. So place your fingers on either side of the proximal head of the fibula and drop your probe right onto that because that is the distal attachment of the lateral collateral ligament. If you're trying to find the lateral collateral ligament without starting on the proximal head of the fibula, you'll be hunting and pecking around. It's, it's tough to find, but as long as you're landmarked right on the proximal head of the fibula, you'll be right there. And so now we can see coming off, so now I'm centered on the proximal head of the fibula, and you can see those fibers extending to the right of the screen and slightly dropping down. That is the lateral collateral ligament, and it extends all the way along. I'm still on it here. And see, I lost it. It's a super thin ligament and easy to lose. This is totally normal. And uh, you have to just follow the fibers. And there, we're still on them. Nice long fibers there. And attaching right here. So that's where it attaches on the distal end of the lateral portion of the femur. Okay. And in terms of the lateral joint line, it is right right here. One can look at the lateral meniscus. There's there's much less to learn about the lateral meniscus on a knee exam than there is on the medial surface. So in conclusion, I would say on Rico's knee, uh, there's, there's no fluid that needs to be aspirated. The tendons uh, and ligaments look healthy to my eye. There is a little bit of lipping 
uh, calcification forming on the medial surface of the knee. Here we're facing the limitation of sonography, sometimes on a joint. Sometimes it can be exceptionally helpful, sometimes not helpful at all. And in Rico's case, he's having pain everywhere. The only pathology that I'm seeing is a little bit of calcification on the medial joint line.